What is going on, my fellow bass heads? Welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide and welcome back to the Guides Network. Got a good instructional video for you today. Hey, we got a little situation going on in our region up here and in a lot of parts of the country this spring. We've had a lot of rain, a lot of heavy, fast rain that has caused these lakes to rise very abruptly and caused them to get very off color, dirty water. Uh, when that happens, this is what you're going to see. You guys can see all those trees and bushes and flooded grass lines and just all kinds of junk in the water. One of the best techniques that you can go to in this situation, especially as we get into spawn, is going to be flipping. So today, I'm going to teach you guys how I go about flipping for big bass. Alright, so before I just break off into the gear and the technique and all the goods that come with flipping what we're going to talk about today, let's go over a little bit of situational, you know, awareness, I guess for lack of a better term. What's going on? This water's come up and flooded all this new cover. The water's dirty. Well, dirty water tends to make fish relate to heavy cover, hard cover. It also tends to drive them more shallow. Well, so what you've got is kind of a perfect storm where the majority of the fish in the lake are wanting to come in to spawn anyway right now. They're thinking about it. If they're not really getting ready to do it, they're not far from it. So all the fish are moving this direction. Then you've got nature pushing them that direction with the high muddy water. And then you have an overabundance of cover present for them to relate to. So a happy fish is going to be right up here in this stuff right now. That's where they're going to be. They're going to make their beds tuck way back in that stuff. You'll find their beds right up on the bank line, tucked up in their overhanging trees and in the little holes in these flooded grass mat type things. And you know, they'll just get in the thickest of thick as they go about making their beds, they'll find one little hole and just live in their day-to-day -day lives, chasing bait, ambush and prey. You know, everything that they need to do, they can do in that really shallow flooded cover. So that being said, it's very important to be able to access that cover efficiently. And one of the best ways to do that is flipping, of course. You gotta be able to pitch it underhanded a little bit. You gotta be able to skip it a little bit. And we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna try and teach you guys how I go about doing both of those techniques. Uh, now let's go ahead and break into our gear and our baits. So I don't wanna go too much into baits because honestly, the baits that you can use for flipping is virtually unlimited uh, when it comes to the different plastics you can use. Uh, the Lake Fork Tackle Hyper Freak is a great one. The Zoom, brush hog baby brush hog is a great one um, there's just a million the Berkeley chigger crawl I mean there's tons of nutter this is a new one that I'm really excited about because it might be just a little bit of a slightly different look and it's brand new so these fish haven't seen it yet it actually comes from the same people that make my rods limit fishing makes this brand new it's just limit fishing creature crawl is all it is but I'll give you guys a good look at it here just got a good rib body to give you some water movement and then these claws the action on them man they kick and swim like no tomorrow even when you put them on like a quarter ounce weight as they're falling they're just kicking like crazy so great little bait that's been introduced by limit fishing uh, and we will have those available on the website very very soon so i'm gonna show you guys how i'm rigging these up first one's just your standard texas rig i've got a 3 16 ounce weight right here you know when i'm fishing dirty water i like to throw a little red bead on there adds a little color and you'll hear this sound right here Every time you shake that bait, when it falls and hits the bottom, it's making that clicking sound, drawing those fish to it in that off-colored water. Other than that, I've got a, this is a Mustad a heavy cover flipping hook right here. I really like this Mustad version because that keeper on there is actually welded on. So it holds the bait better than anything I've ever used. 
uh, it's just a really good strong flipping hook with the best keeper I've ever found as you can see right here on this one I've got one of the limit creature crawls rigged up on on this Texas rig right here for flipping uh, and it's in black and blue black and blue and off-color water is just on standby I mean it's really good uh, definitely in the dirtier water I'm gonna use darker colors I'm gonna use black and blue I'm gonna use green pumpkin and I kind of like this one right here because it's got some green but that red shows up really well in that dirty water as well so the other option and one that you know in, in a lot of ways I kind of prefer um, is a jig this is a 3 8 ounce divine hybrid jig in the black light color I really like that it's black blue and purple and that's a smash crawl trailer that I've trimmed down really short you know when I'm flipping heavy cover and some of those areas are real tight I like a compact bait uh, get in those tight spaces a little easier I mean in all honesty a bigger profile is not going to hurt you but I catch plenty of big fish on compact profile jigs so I kind of like to go with that in this situation uh, like I said that's smash tech smash crawl trailer but I tell you what guys this bait right here if you cut it down it would make a tremendous jig trailer as well I really like it in fact in the dirty water this one might get the notch above the smash crawl simply because it kicks harder but that's something that overall you're gonna just have to make a personal preference decision on what type of action what type of kick you want on a trailer for a jig in this situation you know the main reason that I say I prefer a jig over the Texas rig is skipping uh, if you're gonna skip a jig is a way better option than a Texas rig it's very difficult to skip a Texas rig creature bait uh, there are some Texas rig baits you can skip but that ain't really one you want to get into uh, it can be done but it's not easy especially if you're new to skipping jig on the other hand skipping with a bait caster is never really easy but with a jig it's as easy as it can be it's certainly a lot simpler than doing it with the texas rig all right now let's talk about our rod uh you know a 7.2 medium heavy is really good for somewhat lighter weighted texas rigs and jigs uh three eighths ounce jigs half ounce jigs half ounce texas rigs and below uh limit five series 7.2 medium heavy is a really good go-to for that the other good thing about that is that 7.2 medium heavy, you may want a little bit bigger rod when you're flipping. I like to flip with a 7.4 heavy. But when you're wanting to skip and pitch and get in tight places, that shorter, more flexible rod is a whole lot easier to accomplish that with. So for that reason, I would have to recommend the 7.2 medium heavy for flipping this type of cover where we're dealing with tight spaces. You know, online, 20 pound fluorocarbon is what I like. You can certainly use braid if you prefer. Me personally, I, you know, I like braid when I'm fishing underwater aquatic vegetation a lot, but other than that, I really like fluorocarbon a lot. So on the reel, definitely want to have a high speed reel, something in the seven to one range. Uh, you're going to want to get that, you're going to want to get caught up to that fish and get him up and out of that heavy junk as fast as possible. All right, now let's get up here on the deck and there's a lot to hand positioning, rod positioning, how you go about pitching this bait to do it effectively and efficiently if you've never done right. it before. First thing you need to know, when you want to go to pitching, the lower you hold your bait, if I hold my bait down here, that bait will fly out lower than if I'm holding it up here. If I have this much line out, my bait will go higher. If I have this much line out, my bait will go lower. Ideally, a good general place to start is right even with the reel. Put your hand right here with the reel. You want to hold the bait in your off hand just like this. And, and the one thing that I see the most on guide trips is people try to slingshot it. They try to bow that rod up and shoot that bait out there. Worst thing you can do, you're going to get all kinds of backlashes and it's going to be bad. All it is is a pendulum and at the peak, at the, at the bottom crest of the, at the bottom crest of the pendulum, you want to release your spool and let the bait go on out there. Just let the momentum of it carry it out there. So you take, just like this right here, you drop your rod tip, drop the bait, and pick the rod up. That simple. Uh, but it takes a lot of feel and timing to get that release just right. You know, and as you get it right, you can kind of swing it out to the side and really get it way far out there. Um, but all it is is a momentum deal, guys. It's not about, it's not about loading that rod up or really flicking your wrist real hard it needs to be smooth or you're going to have problems right here now this is pretty light this is 316 ounce that's less than a quarter ounce 
that is about as light as I will go when I'm flipping and I set it up that way on purpose because that's the lightest weight I want when I'm flipping. This right here is a 3 8 ounce jig. It's compact. The weight's connected to it. It's much easier to flip this and to get it to travel further on the momentum because it is compact, you know, and it weighs more so it has more momentum as it comes out of there. Just like that. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> You know, it looks pretty simple because I've been doing this a long time. You know, I've been flipping since I was a kid. It's one of my favorite techniques. I used to love to fish Texas rigs and jigs uh, as a young guy. And so I really learned how to flip and pitch a lot. I've been doing it for a long time, but that's all you do right there. You drop that rod, drop your bait, and then raise your rod. Just like that. Now, one of the key deals, and you want to practice this a lot, you know, if you have a lake and you're fortunate enough to have clear enough water right now that you can do some sight fishing here in a couple weeks, this is still what you want to do. Because you're going to get set up on that fish a few feet away from it, 15 feet away from it, whatever it may be, and you're going to have to make very precise pitches to the exact spot on that bed or right behind that bed and work it into that bed. So pitching is a very flipping, pitching, however you want to call it, very important technique in the springtime for sure especially in the hot water situation we have today but it's very important to get very precise because like i said these are small little areas that we're pitching into and even when you're pitching on the bed you got a small target as well there and a lot of times what i'll do you know if it's spawning time and those fish should be spawning even if the water's so dirty i can't see them i'll try to imagine in my head where they would make a bed i can see one actually right behind the camera right now grass mat comes out makes a little cut there's some brush up against the bank. I could see a bass bedded in there. Those are the type of areas that I will make very precise pitches to even when I can't see bed fish in the springtime. All right, I'm gonna make a couple pitches to the edges of this cover. I'm gonna try to get you guys a shot of what I'm talking about when I say be accurate. I'm hoping this is gonna show up on camera. See where we put that one right there? We just stuck that one right in between the grass bed and the brush on the bank. That's a perfect placement. All right, now there's a patch of green. Let's see if we can get this right up next to it. There's a green bush hanging down in the water over there. And we'll see if we can get this jig right up next to that green bush. Just like that. We were within a couple inches right there. And that's how precise you need to be. A couple inches is a good pitch. And you want to try to get that bait to come out. Once you get good at it, once you got some practice at it, you want that bait to come out as low as possible so it makes as quiet an entry as possible. One more little key tip for you guys. To get that super quiet entry, if you'll actually stop that bait right before it hits the water with your thumb right here, because that bait's flying out there right before that bait hits the water, stop it. It'll make that bait stop, and instead of splashing in with all the momentum, it'll slow it down, and it'll go in real easy. All right, now let's talk about skipping. You know, something that we talked about here, how much line you have out makes it go lower or higher. There's a similar deal on skipping, but it's kind of the opposite. The more line that you have hanging off right here when you try to skip a bait, the higher that bait's going to want to fly out when you initially cast it out. I like to actually get that bait just literally an inch or two from the last eyelet just like that right there the big deal about skipping a bait guys there's a lot of different cast motion you can make you can kind of sidearm it you can roll cast it you can backhand flip it the only thing that truly matters to skip a bait effectively to make it make it skip is get it started and make it fly as close to that water as you can if that's a sidearm roll deal which is kind of what i like to do that's fine if it's backhanded or if it's just a if, you know instead of a dip roll if it's just a straight sidearm but you can get that bait to go really low that's all you got to do that bait has to fly parallel to the water as long as possible let's talk for just a second about how to set up your reel for skipping because that's very important when you go to skip same settings work better for pitching as well biggest thing you want to do is you want to max that breakout set that all the way to max then we'll go ahead and tighten this all the way up tighten this tension knob all the way until my bait will not fall see there buttons release bait's not falling now I want to go till that bait falls real slow like that right there that bait will hit the water without overrunning the spool at all now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna turn it back just a little bit more where that bait will free fall 
okay we still didn't get any overrun there so we're still just a little tight you want this looser than your normal setting just a touch looser than your normal setting you really want that bait to fall that's pretty good so let's check that out all right that was a good shot of one skipping right there you saw how many times it skipped and how far back it went and you can just imagine if that was the point of entry right there where that first skip was i went another 10 12 feet off into the cover all right you guys can kind of see what we're working with there we're going to try to skip this all the way back into that brush back there well we're shorting our skip i over thumbed it a little bit and that's okay mistake to make if you you know if you stop it too early you can save it for the next cast right you don't run it that's what we're talking about right there guys that's getting it back in there as far back in there as it'll go right there beautiful one right there that's a good one well there you go guys there's the baits i use the gear i use and the techniques that i use to get compact texas rigs and jigs in the tight areas in that flooded cover for dirty water flooded cover springtime bass well hey that's it for how to on the flipping look we don't have any fish catch footage on that just yet this situation just happened but i wanted to go ahead and give you guys all the information because i know a lot of you are in the same situation i am right now and this is going to be a very important technique for me over the next month or so if you're interested in, in checking out the gear that we're using today be sure and click the link below to yourlakefortguide.com i have an online store there my rods are for sale there some of the baits that we use are for sale there as well and hey if you want some of these six cents divine the hybrid jigs six cents lures is also linked below and if you guys will enter the promo code your lake fort guide all lowercase all one word you'll get a 10 percent discount on anything you buy from six cents lures.com well that's it for today folks i sure enjoy teaching you about this one of my favorite techniques i can't wait to start popping some big heads on it and uh, i hope you guys can do the same and i hope this helps you out we sure appreciate you guys watching the video today hey if you like this video do us a favor hit that thumbs up if you want to see more be sure and subscribe and be sure to leave us a comment below let us know what you thought if you have any questions please do ask and i'll be happy to answer them just as soon as i can get to them other than that we will see you guys next time right here your lake Court guys